Hi, designers and developers to be. I'm your instructor, Juliet Croco, and I am going to walk you through these practice projects in freecodecamp.org because I want to make sure that you fully understand what you're doing in HTML. And I'm also going to show you some of the differences between um, using the VS Code Editor and using freecodecamp.org. I want you to be coding in VS Code Editor for your actual certification projects, which are also the assessments for the course. So I wanna show you what that's like and I wanna show you the awesome features that it has of like automatically opening and closing your tags. Tags are what we're gonna learn first and then we're just gonna keep going and build this adorable little cat app. And I'm so sorry if you are not a cat person. Enjoy. I'm looking forward to seeing your projects once we learn some code. All right, so once you get into this cute little cat photo app, go ahead and press start coding. We're going to learn these lists. We're going to use um, headings and H1, H2, etc., etc. Okay, so HTML elements have opening tags like H1. Um, H1 is actually the real title of your page. When we had title in VS Code, um, that was actually the title of the HTML document that's being fed to the web browser. Um, so now we're going to make this H1. So all uh, all we're doing is taking this cat photo app and we copy and paste really easily in freecodecamp.org and we're going to replace the hello world inside there. So copy and paste. So we're going to see that we have the preview right here. Uh, console, that's more for JavaScript, um, but we have the preview of all of our coding there. When you're done, you check the code and then submit, go to the next challenge. Looks like we can do control enter, so we'll do that in the future. Next, uh, okay, so all of the headings H1 through H6 are used to signify the importance of the content below them. So it signify the importance, or if you think about an outline, it's kind of like, Okay, here's the title of the page, then here's one of the subjects of the page. Then you have like a, a sub-subject, that would be like H3, you know, you just keep going down. So it's like sub-subject, subject, 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 subject. Anyways, if you ever did like an English class, then you probably created an outline at some point and used headings of some kind. And then, uh, yeah, so we're going to make our first next subtopic of the category cat photo app. So notice that we are inside, we're nested inside the body. So this is where we're going to be um, placing our next H2 element. And we only use one H1 element, okay, per page. Because like I said, it's kind of like the title of the page. Let's go ahead and make a new heading and that's going to be cat photos and then i call these i don't think i mentioned that uh forward it's like a it's like a forward arrow brace or open arrow brace and then we have the forward slash never back always forward uh and then the h2 closing those tags those tags are the opening closing tags of elements okay those are elements and then inside in between the two tags are the content of the text so i'm going to make a new one and i'm going to make a paragraph so in a paragraph we we don't just put text there we could and it's going to show up but that's not the correct syntax so i could put see more cat photos and yeah there it shows up but that's not the right way to do it you gotta enclose it in a paragraph that's for accessibility that's for search engine optimization it's just what we do so opening and close i'll surround our content wrap the content i like to say in that tag oh when i press control enter it didn't work um uh, it's just because I didn't have the whole thing. Um, it's 
kind of nice. It's kind of nice using this um, free code camp because it'll always tick, check, you know, but it has to be very precise. No, no extra spaces or misspellings. So now we're going to talk about comments and we did commenting. It allows you to leave messages without affecting the browser display, meaning that the comments aren't going to show up. I call comment out sometimes. So if I, um, if I like want to test something, I can comment around it. So if I comment out my paragraph, notice if I start with the open arrow, exclamation point, dash, dash, and then at the end of it, dash, dash, closing arrow, then I can like get rid of that code and I can test it. Um, so we're actually going to remind ourselves, we're going to use this code as a reminder. Hey, don't forget to add a link to the cat photos. And we want that up above. So we're just going to take that. I'm going to copy and paste it down here. And then wrap it up in mix right now. You can see it. Now I'm going to wrap it up in that. Make sure that there's no extra spaces. There we go. Now we have a comment. You guys did comments for the heading of your paper. Um, so I say heading of your paper, heading of your HTML document. You always put in comments so that I know it's your original work. Now we're going to get into what is called semantic HTML. There are semantic elements such as main, which basically describes, clearly describes the meaning to both the browser and the developer. So it's telling the browser, this is my main content. And it's also telling the developer, this is my main content. So that if somebody goes after you, they understand. And main always goes between the body tag. Um, so a semantic element, it uh, describes the meaning to both the browser and the developer. Um, like you have the nav bar and you have a footer and a header and all of that good stuff. Um, article, aside, details, fig caption, figure, footer, uh, header, main, mark, section. Those are all semantic, semantic element tags. Then you also have non-semantic and there's only like, they don't have any meaning. They don't tell anything about the content. Um, divs are a big one, D-I-V, and those kind of like set apart a specific part of a web page if you want to do some um, fancy uh, CSS layout. So we'll talk about that later. And then also span. And span is an element that um, basically just describes, again, that allows you to separate some styles and that's going to be talked about again in CSS in the future. So now let's open up. Okay, put it right before, add a new line. Well, the line was already there. That's okay. Open up that main and then close it after the paragraph. Go to the next one. Okay, so we have all of this stuff inside the main element. It's called nesting and they should be placed two spaces further to the right of the element they are nested in. So there's actually a lot of nesting that goes on. I'm going to show you in VS Code real quick how this works. Um, now nesting, what's nice in VS Code, this makes it so that, uh, so see this, the head element, all of that stuff in between is nested. Well, I can actually collapse it via this little arrow. Um, so then I don't have to look at it. Okay. Now I can just focus on the body because I don't care what all was in the head. Um, in VS Code, I don't even have to use my arrow braces. I just start typing the element name main and boom, it's there. Okay. Um, and I just start typing main tab and then it puts it the opening and closing. Wonderful. So all I'm doing is adding some spaces in this next step. Okay. So add my spaces. Let's check my code. Control enter. Yay. It passes. Control enter. Oh, Patreon. Okay, so freecodecamp.org is a nonprofit. They're asking me for five bucks. I totally should pay for it. All of you get this awesome uh, application that's teaching you how to code for free. So um, I would definitely encourage you to throw five bucks their way. 
um, at least, right? You don't have to pay a hundred bucks for a textbook. And that's wonderful. So now we're going to do images. So all we're going to do, um, images is called a self-closing tag, meaning that it doesn't, like, you don't want to have to close it with another element. Uh, I mean, with a closing tag, even if, if you did, though, it's not going to, like, it's not going to not work. So, um, but you just, uh, you just do it. Other self-closing tags are the meta elements inside the head. So there, that's all it wants at this point. Add an image. No image will show up, but let's go ahead and control enter, control enter. Okay, so now HTML attributes. Okay, so attributes are special words inside the opening tag of an element, and that basically controls the element's behavior. So it tells it what it's going to do. So right now you're like image, but it doesn't do anything, right? Nothing showed up. So we have to say where we're getting this image from. Now, in our case, using this um, free code camp, we're actually getting the image from free code camp server. But if we were doing this in our own, like in VS code um, and in our own website, remember that we made the images folder and we would have the images there and we would actually put the file path inside the source rather than um, the website. So uh, here I am, source, um, wrapping it up in quotation marks. I could have done the quotation marks first. Um, and I kind of, uh, I think I messed up something. Well, let me show you something. I'll just show you that when I do it in VS Code and I type image, it actually tells me the two attributes that I need for every single image, which is the source and alt. Alt text is a descriptive, um, is describing the image for screen readers. And I We'll do that in the next step. Go ahead and check the code and I messed up. So your image element should have a source attribute. You either have omitted the attribute or have a typo. Make sure there's space between the element name and duh, put an equal sign. Notice right when I put that equal sign. So it's always like attribute equals this thing. Okay, that's always what it's like and there's always quotation marks. All right, next. Okay, so now we're actually are going to have an alt. Okay, so we're going to have an alt tag and we're going to make it super descriptive because it's like could be a cat, right? But like, uh, I mean, it's more than just a cat. This is a cute orange cat lying on its back. So I'm going to put it outside of the uh, quotation marks and make a new one. And if I do it the right way, when I just say alt, um, quotation marks, then it opens and closes my quotation marks right away, which is great. All right, so next I can also um, put a link, right? So let's see what a link does. Ah, okay. So a link is href. So it's the HTML reference, basically, or HTTP, my bad. HTTP reference, because HTML is a language, HTTP is Hypertext Transfer Protocol. So that's exactly what it's doing, okay? It's saying like, hey, this is the HTTP reference. Sometimes, it's, again, this is not always going to be an external website, okay? Um, here, we're using an online platform. So it has to be an external website because we don't have a file system. In VS Code, when we are creating our websites, um, it will be a file path, okay? So we're like, we're gonna go from one page to another and we'll check that out a little bit later. I just wanna throw that in your brain. Um, sometimes I like to do that just in case it sticks there for later, you never know close up that. Now nothing happens. You don't see anything in there. That's because there's no content content in there. So it's an empty link. But I mean, technically the link is there. It's just not able to be used because you don't have anything in there. Okay. We can also link a picture. So all we're doing is kind of wrapping. So they you know, they talk about it. Uh, a links test must be placed between the opening and closing tags of an anchor link. Um, so notice this says click here to go to, um, and then it has, it is a link. Um, we don't actually want to say link to cat pictures. That's not accessible because the screen reader basically is going to be like link to, um, and then it'll read link to link to cat picture. 
So now we're actually going to turn the words cat photos into a link. This is much better. This is a better practice. Um, and uh, so yeah, you want to turn words into links so that um, so that it makes sense, right? So it's obvious. It's a descriptive link. Okay. See more cat photos. So since it's obvious that it's linked, see more cat photos. I'm just copying and pasting. Let's go ahead and check that and submit. Great. Okay. The next one, we've turned the cat photos. Now we don't need that second link plus because it's not accessible. It's not talking about that, but that isn't why. So we're actually going to make it so that our link opens in a new tab rather than forcing the um, forcing the website to like reload into another tab, uh, I mean, into another page. This is to try to keep people on our site or try to keep people at the, you know, if we're linking to an external site, we don't want them to actually leave our site. We want them to go to the other site and come back. And so you just keep that open. That's how people wind up with 50 tabs, right? <laughs> it's because of this, this blank. That's funny. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to wrap this image in a link. All we had to do is put that same, uh, I could copy the whole um, target. Uh, I can wrap it around the image, copy this from up here. I'll just paste it before image. It's the same way of, um, yeah, same thing. Get rid of that little space there and end my link. And so look at what happens now. So notice now it changes, right? It changes into my little Mickey Mouse hand because I'm on, my, on a Mac. And so that tells me, oh, this is a link. And if I clicked it, it would go to that free photo app. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make a section. Um, what this does is separates the cat photos from other content. So we're like, here, you can have some cat photos. But, you know, next section is going to be something else. So wrapping a section is kind of like wrapping an article if you have multiple articles. But for us, we're having multiple sections. So we don't want the H1 to be included in it because the H1 is like the title of the whole page. So I'm just going to put section around, wrap my H2, my paragraph, my link, the end of the link before the closing main tag and my section. I can highlight everything and tab to indent it automatically. So next we're going to have the next section and now we're going to have a new H2 and we're going to talk about cats and cat list.